Hey folks, Steve here with a special World War I Deluxe Edition uh, video. I uh, wanted to do sort of a extra video for this game now that I've played it a couple of times and have really gotten to enjoy it. Uh, on the topic of, as you can you know, guess by the title of the video here, it's the anatomy of a Gallipoli campaign uh, in this game, World War I Deluxe Edition by Decision Games. Now, uh, if you know anything about history, uh, at least World War I history, you would know that the Gallipoli campaign was a campaign waged against the Ottoman Empire, uh, primarily by the British, though I think some French soldiers were involved, as well as probably, you know, very famously, uh, the Anzac uh, forces. Um, and, you know, essentially the goal was to work their way through Gallipoli to potentially Constantinople, Istanbul, uh, and take the capital of the Ottoman Empire. Now, historically, uh, in real life, that campaign was not successful, but the beauty and fun of war games is that it allows us to uh, venture down other paths and potentially do things differently than history and succeed where uh, factions uh, failed. So, the funny thing about this game is that Prior to the July 2018 errata that Joseph Miranda posted, it was kind of an open question of how exactly one could attempt a Gallipoli campaign, and based on how the rules were written until the errata was made uh, just recently, it really wasn't possible to even attempt a Gallipoli campaign, or it was, it was situated in such a way that you really had no... Uh, sorry, bump the camera there. Uh, really had no choice but to not even try it, because the supply rules just didn't really work out, but um, that's changed now, and it is kind of an interesting topic to consider when playing this game of when and if you should try a uh, Gallipoli campaign. So, what I'm going to do in this video is kind of walk through how to go about doing it, how you're able to do it, and some tips on how to make it effective if you're going to try it. Now, you know, it, like all things here uh, with, you know, any, any war game or any sort of event that you're trying to replicate from history, you know, if you're going to try to do this thing, um, there's going to be some risk and there's going to be some reward. So let's talk about, you know, I guess firstly, as we look through the anatomy of uh, Gallipoli campaign, why would you do it? What, what is the point? What are the gains? What's the reward for attempting this? Well, you know, just like the historical intent, it is the pathway to Constantinople, and likely, well, it's not the only path there, but it's certainly one that is a little unconventional. Obviously, uh, you can see on the map here, I have the camera uh, zoomed in on the area around the, the, uh, the peninsula and, and around the uh, Ottoman Empire here. <coughs> but Gallipoli is this Fort Hex here, Constantinople is, of course, right down the way here in a fort, mobilization hex, capital. And there's a couple of reasons, obviously, why you would want to take it, right? There's some obvious ones. Um, if you manage to get through Gallipoli and you manage to get to Constantinople, control of Gallipoli in Constantinople allows you to use the Sea of uh, Marmara here, which is from this sort of dotted line you can just barely see, uh, through to the Black Sea, this little sea area. Now that by itself isn't terribly important. Um, I mean, it's nice to have, I guess, for crossing through the water area. Uh, but obviously taking Constantinople will, uh, because it's a, a major power capital, provide uh, not only just victory points, but is likely going to cause the Ottoman Empire to have to roll for collapse or surrender. And if you're pushing on, uh, pushing against the Ottomans in the Middle Eastern front as well, you know, you're coming at them from all sides. So obviously, you know, that alone is a reason to strike. It, it's maybe one of the easiest capitals in the game to actually reach with conventional forces if you do a Gallipoli campaign, for instance. And then the final reason, which, um, you know, it, it also lies along the historical uh, plans were that with that uh, with the Bosphorus taken, the Allies can actually now uh, get a, an access to Russia through here and up through the Black Sea 
uh, to ports on the Black Sea to help Russia out. So if you're playing this game and Russia is getting beaten back, as they usually do, and, they, and you don't want them to surrender or collapse, if you're able to not only essentially knock the Ottomans out of the war by taking their capital, um, but also allow uh, mobilization point lending to occur, which you would need to control Constantinople to do so, uh, by opening up the, the Bosphorus Straits there, uh, that's also going to be a big boom. So there's obviously a lot of, of great reasons to approach a Gallipoli campaign um, to take Constantinople. Uh, of course, the risk in doing this is that you're, you know, one, you're dedicating units that could be used elsewhere on the map for other uh, attacks on other fronts. You may also uh, very possibly... Uh, have units that are permanently eliminated. Um, I mean, that goes for any front, but it is possible here, so there's some risk. Uh, and then if you find yourself sort of spending MP uh, in this region and you ultimately don't succeed, uh, you may have very well left a, a bunch of MPs off the board, lost uh, mobilization points and combats, and it's just a failed endeavor, right? So... With that in mind, let's think about how and uh, where to go with a Gallipoli campaign. Now, the the key component of this, and ultimately, you know, how this really works for any uh, campaign like this that you're going to play in World War I uh, Deluxe Edition, is that you're really reliant on these, let's see, I'll just put it in the center here, uh, expeditionary units, the units with the black triangles, and they are cores with typically low values. Two slash two is pretty common uh, for attack and defense values. These expeditionary corps are the only unit in the game that can naval move to a location that is not a friendly controlled port. So, if you wanted to say get a actual army and let's throw this up as a comparison. If you wanted a British army to move uh, with naval movement, they would have to once start in a home port or a friendly port and then be moved through uh, sea zones that are allowed to be moved through by the Allies, or the British in this case, and land in a friendly controlled port. Now, the way you would do this, and this goes for really any area of the game, is typically you would have an expeditionary unit land in a port or attack a port and take it. Um, part of the special rules of an expeditionary unit is that they are able to do an amphibious attack landing, uh, and that means that yes, they can go and either as an attack or simply landing in an unoccupied hex, they can basically drop along the coast. Uh, in other fronts, Landing in a port is great, and the reason why you would want to do that is you land with the port, you now take the port, and as long as you can hold that port until your next move, uh, you can get a unit, like uh, you know, a stronger unit, like an army, to come into the port that is now under your control, and there you've now opened up yet another front, wherever that is, and, and you're going to you know, fight it out. Now, there's one problem with that, in the area around Gallipoli. None of these areas around Gallipoli are actually ports. As you can see, there's a bunch of coastline. Great. But Gallipoli itself is not a port. The hex to its immediate uh, left, west, is not a port. In fact, the only port that's even nearby is Constantinople itself, but that port lies in the Sea of Marmara, which the Allies don't have access to. Now the nice thing, and this is because of the uh, errata clarifying expeditionary unit supply rules, expeditionary units, as long as they're in a coastal hex, are in supply as long as they're on the coast of a sea zone that their faction can navally move on and that can trace back to some other uh, supply source Port. Now, you know, since we're really talking about the British, what that really means is the British transit box, which acts as a port. 
and does uh, allow naval movement through the Aegean Sea here. So when approaching this area, assuming we can get an expeditionary unit to land successfully, they will be in supply. They will be in supply for that impulse, for whatever attacks are occurring, um, and just in general, they're going to be in supply unless they are removed from the coast or they are, uh, I guess, eliminated, really. But that's about it. So that's an important distinction that was added in the errata. And, you know, this whole problem of how can a, a expeditionary unit have supply after landing if it's not a port has kind of plagued the game for a while. If you look back far enough in the Consum world, uh, uh, forum postings, you'll find folks who are asking this question, how do we do a Gallipoli campaign? That doesn't seem to be a way to do it. Uh, because inevitably, you know, the expeditionary unit would land, it would finish the impulse, it wouldn't have supply after the impulse was complete, and it couldn't do any construction of a port or anything else to help it, and it would just simply be eliminated immediately. Um, so this errata, very important errata for a Gallipoli campaign, um, adds the, the clear distinction that those exped expeditionary units, as long as they're on a coast that is friendly, uh, accessible, they can be in supply. So with that, then it's a consideration of, uh, you know, one, we can definitely get to the Aegean Sea. Where do we land? And where do we start the campaign? Well, the naval invasion, or amphibious landing rules, I should say, uh, specify that in order to do this move and then attack or landing in an unoccupied hex, you do have to do so from a all sea hex. So uh, basically, if we look here, the closest for all sea hexes are basically these three hexes here. And you might say, well, Clearly, this is dangerous up here. Why don't we do a really ahistorical southern route? Well, the game is actually cleverly designed enough that it isn't really worth the effort, and I'll show you why. So, if we take our expeditionary unit and we land, say, uh, I guess here, or here, doesn't really matter. If we landed there, there's a couple of good things going for us. You know, one, right, we're not right next to a fort. Uh, so we don't have a Zoc, or, or rather, you know, uh, uh, something standing in the way, which means that we could later move along this coast. But we've got a problem for supply. So if you're using the normal supply rules, you have three hexes to be able to go on a line of communication. Um, so just by itself, obviously, as soon as we go here, we're going to be out of supply because that hex does not border a sea zone that the expeditionary unit could draw supply from. The best way to do naval invasions like this in the game, regardless if it's Gallipoli or not, that doesn't have a port, requires you to land, to hold the hex, and then during the mobilization phase of that turn, at the end of the turn, you spend a mobilization point to construct a port in the zone. So you first of all have to do that. Fair enough, maybe there's not a whole lot of danger nearby. But using the normal supply lines of communication where you could go one, two, three, anything further than that is going to be out of supply. So that's going to be a problem. You could then, if you really wanted to, on a second mobilization phase, so a whole nother turn later, try to build a supply depot. And then once that's complete, you could go one, two, three, okay, uh, and you've managed to cut the, the rail line here, that's nice, but you're really not succeeding in your goals. And even if you built another supply, uh, it's a precarious area here. It really, it really is. So this really isn't a, a viable path at all. Even if you're using the, the line of communication uh, advanced optional rule, where it's based on attack value, now expeditionary core or core, which means you double their attack value for the movement points 
uh, of supply range, even that, which would be four in this case for this unit, still is still much too far away to really get anywhere. So I would just I would just rule out this southern uh, well I guess it's southeast um, you, you know the area I'm talking about. Uh, it's just not really viable. You're, you're gonna truthfully want to follow uh, the other path, the more historical path, uh, just because it's a shorter amount of distance to mess with with nearby rail lines, and that's always going to be very critical in this game for for supply. So let's sort of reverse time a little bit and show an alternative for that. So instead, we invade in the historical location in this peninsula here. So firstly, you can land. And as a part of that landing, again, during the actual combat phase, you will then uh, attack, and, and you'll likely, in this case, be attacking the fort. Now, a one-strength fort uh, with a two-strength gives you a plus one on the combat charts. You would need to roll a result that gives you a two defender loss. Um, so this might be a case where, because taking these areas, these hexes, as part of this campaign are so very important, you may want to be using the stronger uh, Imperial Expeditionary Unit here that actually has a combat strength for attack of three, so you're rolling on the plus two uh, column instead. That's going to increase your odds of actually taking the fort outright. The only thing to be careful of is that that unit is an asterisk unit, which means if it is lost in combat, um, it's gone forever. And that could be an issue for uh, collapse and surrender later, so you're gambling. But again, ultimately this game is all about risk and reward, uh, like a lot of war games. So in this case, we would probably want to use this unit. Rolling, and, and again looking to get a two result on the defender would allow us to take the fort and advance. Now, something that's really important and really key to the reason why this path is, is for sure better um, is that this hex, the one with Gallipoli in it, sits on the coast of both the Sea of Marmara and the Aegean. The Aegean cuts in a little bit here, you can see, and is technically a coastal hex. Additionally, the hex to the immediate right of it, here, is technically also on the coast of both the Aegean and the Sea of Marmara. You can just see, just that little, that little sliver, little sliver of blue right here, allows this hex to also be considered a coastal hex. So, once the landing is complete here, this unit is going to be in, can be in supply here, here, and here. Now you might say, well, why don't you just navally invade this hex? You can't, because again, a naval invasion has to come from an all-sea hex. So this is the closest one, or this one, doesn't really matter. But those are your options. So if we're conducting our campaign, if we're fortunate enough to get from here to here with an attack, we're going to be in pretty good shape to then go ahead and build that port here at the end of the turn, assuming this unit can survive. Now, that port being there is good because it is in this sea. When you construct the port, I, I, the rules don't appear to, to try to notate uh, if you have to choose the sea zone. I might have to look at that again, but either way, you're going to want to put it you know, because you now have a port on the Aegean here in Gallipoli, you've made Gallipoli a port. Then, on a future impulse, you, you kind of have a couple different options. You could send this unit up and out, freeing up this space so that then an army can be navally moved into the hex. If you're worried about this unit being destroyed, you could alternatively pull the unit back here and then 
drop the army in the port. So another reason why that the, the way the spacing is here provides a little bit of options in what you do. Now from there, obviously, things are going to get kind of hairy because, you know, it's not like you get back-to-back -back, uh, impulses. Obviously, the central powers are, are likely going to get a chance to do something about the situation. But the nice thing is, regardless of the line of communication rule that you're using, you can advance out from this hex with supply to threaten Constantinople, to threaten Adrianople and the uh, critical rail lines that connect up through uh, Bulgaria, leading to Romania, leading over to Greece. And so, uh, you know, like, like any amphibious invasion you, using a port, you know, once you've got the port there, you can look at bringing in even more units if you feel the need to, because obviously the, the Ottomans are going to look to protect their capital heavily. So this might be a case where, you know, you have a unit here, maybe you can get it to entrench, and so you're sort of uh, being a nuisance. Let me get this. A nuisance in the area, blocking and protecting. And at some point later, you drop a tank army. And then the tank army can come to a fortified hex, such as Constantinople, that might have a unit inside of it to protect it, you know, a unit plus a fort, that's a pretty strong defensive uh, combat value, but with the power of a assault tank unit, you can force this unit to potentially retreat, retreat here, and take the capital and potentially advance this unit up as well, depending on if it was entrenched or not, um, and maybe you've managed to create some sort of line that maybe looks like this. Now there's a lot of, you know, ifs involved there. Uh, the dice may not go your way, they may not go your way initially or at all, and uh, then you might get stymied here, but that's going to be the case for any front anywhere in this game. You know, you just got to take the dice how they come. So, the, the other thing to keep in mind with this is that taking control of these railways will also be important. If Bulgaria is aligned with the Central Powers, um, you can look to take and make use of the, uh, the rail hexes here that lead into Greece. And if you've combined this invasion with an occupation of Greece, um, that's going to provide secondary supply from, say, Salonika, which is a little off the camera map here, but it's just right over here. You're going to be able to get supply down through this way, assuming you can keep control of the rail hexes. And even if these guys are potentially in danger, uh, you could fall back here and still have supply from the port and supply from the rails that lead back to another port. Um, so really seizing this little area here is really critical to a Gallipoli campaign in this game. You want to retain access to supply and you want to threaten Constantinople. So I've kind of talked about, you know, how uh, to, to do the campaign, why to do the campaign, um, and what units are you going to use in that campaign to be really effective. Um, you know, obviously a, a tank unit is kind of uh, one rare. There's only two of them for the British, for instance. Uh, and you may want to use them elsewhere. But here it makes a great, great way to do it that you're going to have to wait till pretty later, you know, pretty late in the game, later in the game to, to get to use the tank unit. Really the critical piece of all of this is also going to be when do you launch this campaign? And that might ultimately be the deciding factor on whether or not something like this is going to work in a game. Now, uh, it may also depend on what diplomacy rules you're using. For instance, if you're playing a game where uh, you're using the historical entry, then on turn two, the Ottomans are going to join the Central Powers, and they're going to be moving stuff around, they're going to be building new units. They may do something like this, and if they do, that's going to make it 
very difficult to do a Gallipoli campaign at all. In fact, while they've got that unit there, you might as well assume that you're not going to be able to do it. Um, now, how you get around that, of course, is applying pressure on the Ottomans in Egypt and around Basra and Baghdad with separate naval invasions. By doing that, you might be able to draw off forces and the Ottoman player says, I'm going to withdraw this guy because I need him elsewhere. The thing is, a, a, an astute Ottoman player is going to notice that, one, the British are sitting with a bunch of expeditionary units in their transit box waiting to, to do such an attack, in which case they may turtle a little bit and, and set up a defense like this to keep that from happening. Um, you know, or, <laughs> if they're not astute, if they're not paying attention, I mean, you could end up with cases where this unit has gone down into the Middle East, this unit maybe has gone up into Romania to threaten Romania and support other attacks, and he's sticking his chin out just asking for a Gallipoli campaign to, to happen, in which case, you know, you pull the trigger on that and you make him regret it. The only thing is, you have to keep in mind the cadence in which you're working with, because... This action, assuming you're able to successfully take the fort, then requires you to wait until the mobilization phase to build that that port to secure further landings. So there may be cases where the most ideal situation is to do this on a turn that you do not have initiative, meaning you're going second in each impulse, and expend a plan marker in the third impulse, so it's the very last thing that happens in the turn in terms of moving units to perform this. So that that way, you can one, drop the unit, and then immediately build the port. And at the beginning of the next turn, if you're fortunate enough to get the initiative, you will have a back-to-back -back movement, and you can make that move with moving ahead and placing, you know, always I get the port there, Placing another army, that back-to-back -back movement is going to be really critical in that case if you're going to do it. Um, if you do it too early, and say you plop your unit down here, and he's taken Gallipoli, if the Central Powers have too much time to react, what they're going to do is they're going to bring this guy from Romania, probably. They're going to park this guy right, you know, here. Um, and they might bring up this guy back. Or, maybe by now, they've built some reserves. And even a reserve is going to make Constantinople a lot harder to take in this case. So you don't want to give up the <laughs> give up too many hints that you're going to launch a Gallipoli campaign like this, a naval invasion like this. Um, all part of the bluff, right? Um, the enemy doesn't know where you're going. But... Uh, something like a third impulse drop is going to work a lot better, especially if you think you can get yourself initiative to get that back-to-back -back impulse, get the units moved out of the way, bring in an army, and then, you know, this front's a real contested front. Um, and, you know, even in the case where, you know, if the Ottomans are able to get some units down here, and you're able to get, you know, let's say we get that army in here, um, and even potentially get, you know, more expeditionary units down, or, again, later in the game, a tank army. I mean, this is still yet another front that you could be using to drain Ottoman mobilization points anyway, which will inevitably force him to retreat or to destroy units. So, either way, I mean, there's a lot to be gained here from it. Um, now, some of that you know, this whole situation is really going to be dependent on when and how the Ottomans enter the game. Again, if you're looking to do an early version of this campaign, the Ottomans are going to start something like this on turn two with the, with the historical rules. It could be that if you're playing with the interactive diplomacy rules, where the Ottomans may not come in on turn two, they may not come in for a long time, what you can alternatively do as the British, it, or as the Allies uh, with the British, is to declare war and invade the Ottomans. Now this gives the Central Powers some victory points for violating the Ottomans' neutrality. But again, if you're able to do this, uh, you might be able to catch them 
a little off guard and immediately start off that invasion with the capture of Gallipoli. Um, now, you got to do that, you know, early in the turn, and so again, there's that chance for a counterattack, but because the Ottomans start with relatively low mobilization points when they enter the war, you do have a pretty good chance of putting them on the back heels right away. So if, you, if you're lucky enough that you get to decide when the Ottomans join by invading them before the Central Powers can actually activate them, then uh, you, can, you can potentially pull this off very swiftly. You'd want to do it as soon as you declare war, uh, or you know, in the very first impulse after declaring war. Um, if later in the war the Ottomans are activated with diplomacy and you didn't declare war, um, that still might be okay, because again, you can more swiftly make use of a capture of Gallipoli with the expeditionary unit, and then maybe bring in a tank unit, which is going to be much more effective at clearing the pathway to Constantinople. A little bit different, obviously, uh, the, the real Gallipoli campaign didn't have the advantage of tanks in this case, but... Uh, you know, again, a historical circumstances. We're going to get some a historical outcomes potentially. Okay, so I think I covered everything I wanted to cover for this. Um, you know, hopefully by watching this video, and if you're interested in playing the game, you understand a little bit more about how amphibious operations work in the game, how do naval uh, landings work, and how to open up a new front using those mechanics and more importantly, understanding how you can use those things uh, and this strategy to apply pressure on the Ottomans and the Central Power players uh, in a very critical region around Constantinople. Um, and you may be able to pull off a better Gallipoli than uh, they did in real life. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope it was informative. If you would like to see more content like this, hit subscribe. If you enjoyed this video enough, hit the like button, that whole thing, because it is YouTube. Um, otherwise, uh, have fun and take care. See ya.